this issue of Fashion Classics, a Ford farewell. Witness the departure of Tom Ford from the house he never finished and the one that he rebuilt. I think he made over Gucci in his own image and made us completely forget about the sort of horsey, rather conservative and indeed failing company that it was in, in the past. He made it into Tom's Gucci. For Dawn Mello, who recruited the unknown designer in the early 90s, the departure of her protege was a chance to reflect. I remember Gucci in the 60s when it was a great brand, but it had gone down and it uh, was really down. And then when Tom took over, he, he really gave it another spin. He brought it to um, the modern age and in doing so, he changed the face of fashion. You know, when Tom went to uh, Gucci, he wasn't a star. He became a star through what he did. He had no qualifications for the job because uh, he, was, he was a designer of jeans for Perry Ellis. He was always a very ambitious young man. Uh, I had intended to move to Europe uh, and work uh, at Gucci for a couple of years and start my own collection. But a series of events led to a different future and here I am and I certainly don't regret a minute of it. It's been amazing and I've had an amazing time and it's been uh, truly a wonderful period in my life. And coming up, more from other stars in the Gucci Group stable. Alexander McQueen, Stella McCartney and Yves Saint Laurent. When the 29-year-old designer arrived at the Horsey House in 1990, he was merely a hired hand, not even allowed to take a runway bow. For the first few years, Tom Ford toiled away behind the scenes. But for fall 1995, he sent out a 70s-inspired blockbuster and emerged for his first finale. Gucci entered a new chapter. The long goodbye began in Milan this season with Tom's final Gucci collection. But what I thought was so spectacular was he didn't fill it with a, a sob scene. He didn't make it overly dramatic. He just gave us a very clean, perfect, take that collection, and now you know what you'll be missing. With this collection, Tom took a look back at his own archives, acknowledging the inevitability of somebody else doing the same thing in the future. It's exactly what I wanted to do, because I, I think at some point someone probably will, and I thought, well, I might as well get the jump on this and uh, do it myself. I just sort of thought, you know, what have been the moments for me that, that I have come the closest to achieving what I wanted to, ch to achieve in terms of making a statement about how I felt women should look and men should look and in this sort of very idealized, stylized Gucci world. The whole thing has been hard. I have to say it's been very strange and uh, it hits in waves and I have waves of, you know, a few days where it's so incredibly depressing and upsetting and then I have waves of a few days where uh, you know, it, it's very exciting to look forward to a new life and a new career. There was no way I could start crying on the runway tonight. And there was no way I could have cried, you know, during fittings this last week or putting this collection together. And there's no way I can cry now because I have to go to Paris and do Saint Laurent. And then I have ad campaigns to shoot and then I have the rest of my team to worry about before I really leave the company. So. I'm, you know, dealing with that in my own way, but I'm also pushing it aside. And I think that probably this summer, after I've had a time to take a bit of it in, uh, it will really affect me. Well, what I hope people will remember me for is a designer who wanted people to celebrate life. You know, uh, we don't live very long. Uh, I think you should have a, f a great time while you're on this earth, you know, and you know, all of us are spoiled because anyone who can consume or buy or even worry about fashion is in a great position already on this planet. Uh, but if you are in that position, you know, don't feel guilty about it. We're material beings, we live in a material world, enjoy it, enjoy life. Make, make life what you want it to be. You know, to do it, do it, live it now. And uh, that's to me what fashion's about, it should be fun, it's about celebrating life. I thought the only thing I can say is was Tom Ford for Gucci, I think the one and only. That was simply a spectacular show. I really believe it was one of the best I ever seen, and I've seen a lot of shows. Despite ongoing negotiations throughout 2003 with a parent company, by November talks had broken down and neither Tom nor Domenico De Sole, the CEO of the Gucci Group, resigned their contracts. It was an issue of control. Things changed quite unexpectedly. And so um, the succession plan that had been um, 
in place, which involved um, Tom eventually becoming um, CEO of Gucci Group, Domenico retiring, perhaps Tom choosing other designers for, for Gucci and for, and for San Ron, um, suddenly collapsed and, um, and the whole thing has obviously been um, thrown up in the air. Yeah, I was surprised because I honestly thought that what the two of them both brought to this, the Gucci Group was so remarkable and you know, Tom is not someone as we've seen that's easily replaced. I just wish luck a lot of luck to the person who is going to take over because it would be very difficult to, um, to fit uh, the shoes of Yves Saint Laurent and the boots of Tom Ford. Who would take over from Tom became fashion's favorite guessing game, albeit one that Tom didn't want to play. I don't know and I don't really want to talk about that and I wish whoever it is a lot of luck. It's the $64 million question. You know, there are a lot of names being bandied around. I'm, I'm sure they'll make a great choice, and we're all looking forward to seeing who it's going to be. It's very hard for me to think of anyone filling these shoes, and yet, obviously, there's a young talent out there, another young Tom Ford, who might take the brand, change it, I mean, because it won't be the same. People are saying, oh, it could be Proenza Schuler, it could be Albert Elbaz, it could be this, it could be that. I mean, it's a guessing game, isn't it? And I think there's a lot of musical chairs going on at the moment in fashion. I mean, I'd, usually I'd like to see someone like um, uh, Thomas Meyer there would be kind of great. I mean, he's made such a hit with his uh, accessories uh, for Bottega Veneta. Saint Laurent is a tougher thing. To, I mean, it's a, it's, a huge, um, it's a huge job. It's very difficult. Um, I'm sad that uh, McQueen uh, decided not to do it. So. Had he taken the YSL job, it would have been, um, you know, a, 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 another, another career entirely for him. And I think he's worked so hard to get to this point where he's built his, his own lineup to the point where he can do what he wants. Tom and Domenico's strategy included setting up younger talent with their own lines. One designer to benefit from this was Alexander McQueen. Having controversially turned down the prestigious Saint Laurent job, McQueen was now free to concentrate on his own line. The clothes are certainly very modern. There's nothing retro about McQueen this season. But it was not just the fashion on the runway that was ultra-modern. This season, beauty went to new extremes. The makeup today is taking the nude of the season to a McQueen level, which is Botox beauty, or it's um, all about um, an alien nude. Um, we've sort of like stretched skin and then just put a lot of highlight over the skin. So it's a very pure kind of communion meets war of the worlds kind of makeup. It's um, based on like this neoclassic kind of hair that you'd sort of maybe seen a Greek kind of sketch or on a sort of statue or something. When I was talking to Alexandra about the um, concept, it's based on sort of space age, so I came up with this idea of these very tight curls, almost like a cap of curls. But in a way, it's a very sort of classic kind of really, really old kind of style. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting that he went headlong into something so futuristic and modern. What was interesting was that it was incredibly modern. It was like 2001, you know, the movie, just so sort of reaching into a new area. But then again, it referenced sort of medieval looks. It sort of brought the past and the future together, which was really interesting. It was a singular color palette. It was all that sort of blush color. But that's the other thing that was interesting is ordinarily when you see a designer delve into a really modern look, they tend to use really antiseptic colors that's usually white or silver or metallic. To see this beautiful feminine color palette in modern silhouettes was really unique and really interesting. Lee is unbelievably talented and I really believe he's, he's a big, great star of the new generation and he's a, a, a true creative force and, and most important what I think that Lee wants to succeed, you know, he's very serious about succeeding, understands where he's going, where he's taking his brand and that's the best way to be successful, to have the desire for it and I think he's, he's really shown the maturity in the last few shows, the way he's taken his product, I think he's done a superb job. 
The finale was just vintage McQueen at his finest, being the showman that he is. He never ceases to excite the audience with a grand finale, and these gowns were sort of a mixture of Queen Amidala from Star Wars to Kate Blanchett's character in Lord of the Wings. He really felt this sort of Middle Earth kind of rebirth feeling of this beautiful goddess coming from the ashes, and it was just beyond. In April, the announcement was made that Stefano Pilati would take over at YSL and a team would take control at Gucci. All had worked under Tom Ford at the respective houses. None were known outside the inner circles. In some ways, it's a smart move because it's such a big undertaking that any sort of star designer who goes in there and has to take that on, I think they have more to lose, actually, than they have to gain. But for someone whose name isn't really known beyond, you know, the atelier, it's, it's sort of only a win-win. Tom told me in that interview that he thinks Stefano is wildly talented and, um, and was, in fact, his choice to, to succeed at, at, Saint, um, at Saint Laurent. He has, he has the chance to really, you know, to develop Saint Laurent, to take it and claim it for his own, because Tom had not completed that process, as he's the first to admit. I think collections that succeed are those when the designer has very much their own point of view, their own direction, and they're not looking at the past or whatever anyone else may have done. We have not seen any major house flourish under a team, because at the end of the day, a singular vision determines the direction of the house. Everything from, you know, from product to store design to campaign, who's the final person to say yes and no? Gucci, of course, will carry on. And, I mean, the brand will sell. It's, it's a well enough name. But the thing is, it won't have that sparkle. It won't have that cachet. It won't have that fizz. But, it, but it's not just about Gucci. This is something that is going to be a question for the industry going forward. And it will be fascinating to see how it develops. I think his, his first foray into ready to wear is really exceptional. When the Gucci Group bought Bottega Veneta in 2001, Ford promptly installed Tomas Meyer at the helm. This season was his first ready-to-wear collection. The collection is kind of an homage to New York, to Manhattan. You know, we are opening a major store in the city this uh, fall. And so you know, I've been traveling to New York for so many years, and I have a lot of, like, favorite spots and uh, things about New York that I love and it seemed to be the right time. So I like the bright lights, you know, when you go downtown uh, Broadway and you are at Times Square. I like Park Avenue and it's dark and the street is all rainy and shiny and the fume comes out. I like uh, even like the barricades when they do road work and you have these orange barricades up. I like this, the noise in the city, the check hammer, the, the horns. While the collection took on the style of New York City, the hair and makeup was distinctly influenced by the 1920s. Louise um, Brooks was the inspiration, you know, that feeling of the small head, but we're doing it in various, you know, various ways. We're just thinking of girls that are really beautiful and healthy. Maybe they were just outdoors uh, and they got a really beautiful flush on their skin and uh, very transparent and their mouth is uh, maybe a mouth that uh, after you've had a drink of wine part of your lipstick's gone it's matte and uh, we were going for a texture of like uh, the inside of a rose uh, rose petal the big new bag for us is the uh, uh, three uh, piece frame bag which is an original 1968 Bottega frame and uh, that we reworked and it's a beautiful, beautiful bag that comes also as a limited edition for the New York store opening. And we don't look at it as a ready-to-work collection for us. You know, we are a house of accessories and everything is like an accessory piece. So clothing is also an accessory piece. It's a great skirt, it's a great top, it's a great coat and uh, it all stands up alone. But uh, obviously I uh, put it together in a personal way it's just a very grown-up collection, and uh, I love it. Tom is a very good friend of mine, and of course I 
I push him to stay and I hope really then he changed his mind and he come back very soon in the world of fashion. I think they better call him back. And I think it's very depressing without him because there are not many people like this who are glamorous, who are fun, who give some excitement. And the big question is, what, he, what does he do next? And Everyone's thinking Hollywood, and it very well may be. I think that Tom is, you know, wildly talented, wildly focused, and um, I'm sure he'll take the time to really figure out what he wants to do. I'm sure he'll be back with us before too long, toiling back in the fashion trenches. I've opened an office in Los Angeles, and I'm looking for the right film script to direct, and so I'm not really retired. I'm just stepping away from fashion for the moment. I think she's one of the great designers of the world. You must be so proud. I am very proud. Another link in the Gucci group chain is Stella McCartney. In 2001, Tom and Domenico offered the young talent, at the time designing for Chloe, her own label. For autumn winter 2004, McCartney's muse went on an adventure. We were looking at like down comforters and sort of duvets and things. And I think the idea sort of started turning into this sort of woman that was sort of on a this 40s sort of what are they called the, the mobster's girlfriends what are they called again like mo mole or something <laughs> yeah and you know she was sort of flying on a private jet in the 40s to meet her sort of gangster boyfriend and then they had to do a crash landing in the forest and so it's kind of like oh you know she's got a down comforter and her little silk sort of down comforter and wraps herself up and then starts to just sort of have to rummage through his clothes and borrow some of his and then just finding little elements on the forest floor It's a challenge to sort of make, you know, something that like fur that isn't fur. But in a way, I, I actually said when we were choosing the fabrics, I was like, I want this volume, but I don't want to use fake fur because I don't. If, even if I used fur, I wouldn't do fur because I think it's really a bit predictable this season. We took lots of yarns and sort of wove them and embroidered things with chiffons and ribbons. And it was it's, a, it's always a, a challenge to get that result, but not by, you know, not taking the easy route. So that for us is a big challenge, but it's, it's a good challenge. I think it's fantastic. I always love her work, and I'm biased, of course, but I think a uh, very mature collection. Awesome. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to produ produce and costume design one of my films. She's amazing. She's got the voice of youth. Love that. Makes me young. Design. I feel like we're, we move forward each season in the way that we do it and my team, you know, we're all sort of getting quite, we like it, we're enjoying it, you know, and that's important. For me, you have to make every single piece a beautiful piece because I, when I wear clothes, I don't wear entire looks, you know, I just want to take one thing and make it my own. And I think that if you have to look at each, each piece and, and treat it accordingly and sort of give it credit. I think everyone in the group, is it's a sad day for everyone because they've been so amazing. Tom, I mean, they've been there for 12, 14 years and they're wonderful people. It's a very uh, sad moment for fashion, but let's see um, what the future brings. I feel very sad. At the same time, I think it was a grand finale. It's just a, a very emotional moment uh, for me and um, <clears throat> in fact I just was with him backstage and he's not at all emotional. I'm emotional and he's not. But. It's been a long time in coming. I'm sure that there will be for Tom and for a lot of people a certain sense of relief that it's finally over, you know? It's always, it's always a little sad when something finishes but then, you know, one door closes and a million opens. No, it's sad and uh, but that's life and you have to accept what comes your way but it's been a wonderful run when the gucci group acquired the e saint laurent fashion and beauty business in 1999 tom took over the creative helm of reeve gauche the ready to wear line from the beginning the relationship between saint laurent and ford was rocky Saint Laurent claimed that Ford did not respect him, while Ford countered, citing a lack of support from the master. Despite the strained relations, Ford still managed to create several well-received collections in his time at the house. At Saint Laurent, it was really a continuation of what I've been doing, which is each season to take a theme or something that was very Yves Saint Laurent, 
uh, this being uh, China, opium. He launched uh, opium in 1976. This was very much based on a collection or inspired by a collection that Eve did in 1977-78, which was a winter collection of go to shoulders and uh, lots of fur trim and very fitted, uh, and certain silhouettes very fitted, very inspired uh, by China. So this was a continuation of what I'm doing at Salon, which is different than the way I approach Gucci. I think at this point he's reconciled, he's ready to move on, and um, that said, he has been putting all into this collection. Obviously he perceived Saint Laurent as a work in progress, not a resolved, you know, not a resolved collection with his stamp on it. I feel very proud of the work that I've been doing at Saint Laurent, uh, but I would have not minded to have had a few more years at it because there's so many things, you know, I adore uh, the work of Yves Saint Laurent. I've only always said the best things about Mr. Saint Laurent. He's been inspirational to me as a fashion designer. It's such a rich heritage that I would have loved to have had more time to continue working on it. I would also like to have seen Saint Laurent become profitable as a business. Where it is today is exactly where it is supposed to be. We knew that this was a long-term proposition. We've invested heavily in the brand. Uh, and we're very happy with where we are in terms of sales. I, mean, we, I think we've made tremendous strides uh, at Saint Laurent, but I would love to have seen it reach uh, you know, profitability as a company and to have had the chance to work on it longer. When asked about the difficulties of designing for a company where not only was the namesake designer still alive, but also somewhat antagonistic towards him, Ford was characteristically diplomatic. It wasn't hard. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. Uh, it's not what I had hoped for. I have tremendous admiration for Eve. I still think he's a brilliant man, a great designer, even though he has said not the kindest things about me in the press. Uh, but that's his opinion. That's fine. You know, my goal wasn't to come here and to impress Yves Saint Laurent or to try to be Yves Saint Laurent. My goal was to come look at the heritage of the house, try to reformulate a strategy that made sense for today. And I feel that we've achieved that and I'm very happy with that. So, of course, it's a disappointment when someone you admire doesn't necessarily admire what you do. But that's their opinion, and you move on. I think it was a, you know, spectacular way to go out with something that was incredibly glamorous. The workmanship was astonishing. I mean, the, the design was so um, dense, you couldn't really take it all in. April 2005, Ford and Desole announced the formation of a new company under the Tom Ford brand. And one of the first deals they signed is an agreement with Estee Lauder for perfume and beauty products.